Ron Gimbert, grade I'm in third class. We're only up there for a couple months because it, uh, the North Vietnamese and uh, would uh, shoot artillery shells from the DMZ over onto uh, the base that we were at. So, and when that happened, you, if, if you were on shore, your duty was to run to the boat and get it out of there so it wouldn't, wouldn't get hit. So, but then it, it, you sort of always remember the artillery shells. You would hear a, like a ringing sound, or a whistling sound, if you will. And as long as you heard that, you knew you were pretty, all right. But once it stopped, then you had to find a place to hide or get into a bunker or something because then shortly after that, that's when the explosion happens and stuff. And uh, I guess the Navy thought it was getting too uh, dangerous for us to have the boats there and everything because they sent us from there. I went down to Da Nang and we would patrol, actually patrol back up by Quad Viet out of Da Nang. Being a swift boat sailor, it was a relaxed Navy. I guess that's the best way to, to phrase it because uh, after a while, you're over there, you're in cutoffs, you're in sandals, right? And it's a nice sunny day, you're, you're really not wearing a shirt, you have a flak jacket. And that was about it and stuff. And my, my main job actually on, on the boat, I was the board and search guy. So I would uh, board up the junks and the sand pans and stuff and uh, look for the, the contraband that, if there was any and stuff. And everyone else would be at their battle stations with their M16s or 12 gauge shotgun or 38 or 45. And I had a 38 when I went aboard the junks and sand pans and stuff, and, but that, that was about it. Well, they went from a small sand pan to even a, what they had at uh, a basket boat. I, I remember this one thing. We got a blip on the radar about 15 miles out at sea. And it, it come up pretty big. So we said, oh, all right, we get, maybe we got a, a trawler or something, or a large sand pan out. So we take off and we go out. And it was a basket boat. And a vet, Vietnamese fisherman, and the basket boat is maybe that big, around, and he was just out there fishing. And we thought, God, that's strange, you know? But I guess it was just a, a freak uh, experience or whatever. So, and, <clears throat> and the, uh, the other thing I remember, there's a, a sauce that they make called nuke mom. And what they would do, they would put fish heads and rice and salt in these large vats. And they would sail from Saigon up to Da Nang or Da Nang down to Saigon or something. And this stuff would ferment as they went along. And I just, well, I had to take a stick or something, and sh you know, and it was horrible. It stunk. And it's, to this day, I, I left because now, now we have Vietnamese restaurants here and everything. And, and one of the things on the menu is nuke mom sauce. So <laughs> I thought that was kind of funny, but that was another experience. But we, our, the crew captured a couple sand pans full of arms and everything. And I wasn't there because I was on R&R. &R. And it, it happened the day that I came back from R&R, &R, but they were already out on patrol and stuff. So when they did that, they brought it in. And what you're supposed to do is turn all the weapons over to the proper authorities. And we, we kept some. And, uh, we had AK-47s and stuff and everything. And, to, and we had them for a week because then once they 
uh, oh, we're missing something here. And then they came and got him and everything. But yeah. And uh, we were in Da Nang for Tet. And what we would do is during the Tet offensive, we would patrol our 24 hours, come back in, refuel, rearm, then get some sleep. But then six o'clock at night, they would send us out and go up the river and patrol the river until dawn the next day. And then you'd come back in and uh, refuel again and just go back out and patrol again for your 24 hours. So during that time, you were doing like 36 hours of patrolling. And then after that, we went to uh, July. And uh, I was down there for uh, a couple months until my time to leave, actually. But it was, uh, I had the same crew the entire time until we got to July. And we were there for a couple months and our engine men got uh, transferred someplace, Billy Williams. And our boat officer, I believe his, it was his brother-in-law who died down, I think, in Saigon. And he was able to take the body back home. So we, we switched and I had a new ONC and a new engine man and stuff. So, but that's about it. And then from there, I uh, came back stateside and I wound up being assigned to the USS Sacramento, 